I'm a guy that makes a lot of YouTube videos about music gear, and along the way I've played almost every Strymon pedal there is. So in this video, I'm gonna try to rank them all and put them in tiers according to how good they are. I'm gonna go through every pedal currently being sold by Strymon, but first I gotta go through what my tiers are. Starting at the bottom. The lowest tier is the tier of pedals I just haven't played yet. There's a few of these. If I've never touched it, it goes in this tier. Up from that is the low tier. This is pedals that I had that I sold. And when we get to these, I'll explain why I sold them. Then we have the mid tier, which is pedals I have that I have not sold, that I expect to use at some point, or I've used them a little bit. Then we have the high tier. This is pedals that I use a lot. And a lot means two things. It means either I put it on my records, or I put it on records I made for other people, or it means that these pedals are currently on my pedal board, or both. And then we have the ultra tier. There's, there's only one pedal that's on this tier. This is the highest tier. This is a pedal that I don't even think of as being like the best Strymon. It's like a pedal I can't even live without. It's a class of its own, but we're going to get to that later. All right. Also, I put these pedals in like a random order that I thought would make the video more interesting. So we're going to be like hopping around between the tiers. First up, we have the timeline. I use this a lot. This goes in the high tier. I, I can't hold it up because it's like literally on my pedal board right now. It's Velcro down. And I didn't want to deal with that. It's on my pedal board. I've used it on my record. Um, you know, it can do like every kind of delay there is. The fact that you can pick the BPM, sorry, the fact that you can pick the, temp, the tempo to be BPM specific, you can like time the delays to whatever BPM it is. That comes handy all the time. And then even outside of making delay sounds, it can do a bunch of crazy stuff that I need and that I love. Before I had the Boss Harmonist on my pedal board as the pitch shifter, I just used the timeline as my pitch shifter. The first video I ever made on my channel that was a gear video was about the Strymon timeline. It was called Strymon Timeline, How to Be Advanced. If you want to hear what I'm talking about with the other sounds I can do, you should just watch that video. Timeline goes on the high tier. Okay, next, we have the Cloud Burst. I have this one here. Um, I put this in the middle tier. I have it. They sent it to me. I, I've kept it. I haven't used it a lot, but I like it. I, it's, it's small. Um, I keep thinking it'll come in handy since it's small and it sounds good. I also feel like over the course of the decay knob, it, it can actually become like many different types of reverbs. Like I sort of think of this as almost like a multi-mode reverb, but the different modes are just across the range of the decay knob. So I like that it sounds good and that it's easy to use and that it's small. I feel like it's going to come in handy at some point, but I haven't used it a lot yet. So this is mid-tier. Okay, next we have the Brig. The Brig I sold. I sold the Brig. So it goes on the low tier. I sold it because I already had the timeline on my board and I felt like the timeline could do everything the Brig could do. So I just sold it. Um... But I do miss it sometimes. There, there's like a, I have a video about it. I have a video about all these pedals. I have a video about the Brig, and sometimes I miss the sounds in that video. They're, they're the last one, Proto number five in my Brig video, is like a reverb thing. I miss that reverb sometimes. So um, it's in the low tier, but you know maybe that was a mistake. OK, next we have the Sunset. This is like their dual overdrive. I've never played this one. I'm sorry. That goes in the, I haven't played it tier. Next, we have the Zelza. I sold the Zelza. Um, I sold it because I already have the Mobius. We're going to talk about the Mobius when I get to the Mobius. The Zelza sounds good. The, all the Shyman pedals sound good, but I just felt like the Zelza is sort of just like a cool, good-sounding multi-modulation pedal in a small box, but I already crammed the bigger Mobius onto my board, so like I didn't really need it. And I also didn't think that any of the... None of the things the Zelza can do are like that weird. And I, I sort of like need a pedal to do weird stuff if I'm going to keep it. There are a couple pedals that don't do anything weird that are so good that I keep them, but those are rare. I mean, I'm going to talk about them later in this video. I just felt like the Zelza is good, but I already have good modulation effects, and so I don't need it. So I sold it. So that's going on the low tier, but all the tiers are also going to be ordered within themselves. So like, Furthest to the left is the highest on the tier. And since I missed the Brig, that's like higher than the Zelza. So Zelza goes low tier, but to the right of the Brig. Okay, next we have the Mobius. 
This is high tier. This is on my board, but I took it off my board because I was using it for a different YouTube video. So I can hold it up. Um, this is very high. I think this is even higher than the timeline. Um, just the tremolo stuff that the Mobius can do is a huge deal for me. You can pick the tempo to be BPM specific. I love that about the timeline. I'd love it even more about the Mobius because of the tremolo thing. It's got tremolo wave shapes that are pretty cool. It can do pulse, which is almost like the boss slicer type of thing. It can do rectangle, which is like, it's like a square, which it can also do, but it's like um, a longer on and a shorter off. The, the tremolo alone in the Mobius is a big deal. Um, I use it all the time. I like run synth bass sounds into it and then chop it up. That's a sound I'm like hooked on. <laughs> And then you can, there's also a pattern tremolo in it. So you can like design your own tremolo patterns, which I also think is cool. Um, all the modulation stuff I think sounds good, like the chorus and the flange or whatever. I'm happy with those. Um, and then it can do weird stuff too. There's like some pitch shift stuff you can do with an expression pedal that is almost like the Digitech whammy pedal. If you don't believe me, you should watch the video I have dedicated to the Mobius. Um, the Mobius to me is a combination of like very useful, normal sounding effects and then like very original, crazy sounding effects you can kind of design yourself. So Mobius is high tier. I think I maybe even put it in front of the timeline. Next, we have the Lex. The Lex I sold because I have the Mobius and I think the rotary sounds in the Lex. Sorry, I think the rotary sounds in the Mobius sound good enough for me. I don't need the Lex. Also, by the way, for this video, like... I'm only talking about the Lex V2. And like when we get to the Big Sky, I'm only going to talk about the Big Sky MX. I'm only going to talk about the more recent, the most upgraded version of every pedal. I'm not going to do every version of every pedal. I'm only talking about whatever the most recent, whatever the most fanciest, whatever the current Strymon version of the product is. That's what I'm talking about. So they sent me a Lex V2. Um, I made a video about it. That's the other thing. Like They sent me these pedals. They didn't pay me, but they did send me a lot of pedals. I don't know if we have to talk about that. You got to just figure out how to judge my integrity. You know, I also I'm, I have affiliate links too. You just you just got to figure it out. You got to decide if you can trust me or not. You're on your own. I'm sorry. Also, by the way, if you want to buy any Strymon pedal, I have affiliate links you can use that'll give me a small commission on anything you buy. I'll put the affiliate links in the video description. So why did I sell the Lex? There's a specific reason. It's because the Mobius can do one thing with its rotary engine that the Lex cannot or at least I couldn't get the Lex to do it, which is that um, if you put the speed all the way up and then you make the subdivision, the fastest subdivision in the Mobius, the Lex sound gets so fast that it becomes this like crazy ring modulation thing that I love. That to me is cooler than what the Lex V2 can do otherwise. So I sold my Lex. Next, we have the Night Sky. This is high tier. I use this one a lot. I like this one a lot. I like that it's one of the bigger Strymon boxes, but it doesn't have a screen. I think that's cool. I'll do a screen. I'll deal with the screen if I have to deal with the screen, but I like no screen. Um, and I like that there's like a, just a very basic neutral sounding reverb this can do that I like, which is the dense texture. I almost kind of feel like if you put it on dense and then no matter what you do after that, you're just getting like a very right and good reverb sound. It's like useful for when I don't know what I want, especially with the stereo imaging. So I like that about it. But then with the pitch stuff it can do, there's a lot of glitchy cyber attack weirdness in here that I love. If you watch my video about the night sky, how to be advanced, like it'll become obvious why this pedal means a lot to me. It can do the sort of weird stuff that I crave. Um, and then also my video about this was like an early hit for my channel. So I have a sentimental attachment there. Um, the video I made about this was like the the first video I ever had on YouTube that like did well, you know? I think, I mean, when I say that, I mean it got like, I think it got 700 views in one day. And at the time, that was a lot for your old pal, Ivan. So this is high tier. That said, um, I, I don't use it as much as I use the timeline and the Mobius. So it, it's behind them. Next, we got the Deco. This is high tier. I use this a lot. There's a very specific thing I use this for. When I'm recording, um, I'll use this to create a stereo image out of a mono signal. I just set up a ping pong stereo delay with like very fast delay time, like imperceptible as a delay. Uh, and that'll just 
take a mono signal and create a stereo version of it. It sounds good when I do that. It's useful for recording. Um, so I'm putting this high tier. The saturation side is cool too. It sounds good. But for me, sometimes that just kind of makes my like noise floor worse. So I don't use it that much. Um, but I, I, do, I do the stereo trick a lot. So this goes high tier, but I'm going to put it behind everything else on the high tier just because this is not like the sexiest thing I do with pedals in my life, just getting stuff to sound stereo. Like, that's cool, but it's not bananas. So this is high tier, but at the end of high tier. Okay, next is Volante. This is middle tier. I like this for the fact that you can make, like, um, irregular rhythms with the multiple tape heads. Like, instead of just, you can make, like, and you can, like, space them out and mess with them. And you can also sort of change where they are in the stereo spread. The, the reason I got this, actually, was because of the Keeley Dark Side. The Keeley Dark Side is a tape head delay pedal, and some of the irregular tape head spacings in that pedal are super cool and rhythmic. Like, the thing I love to do is just take a percussive sound and send it into a weird uh, syncopated delay pattern in the Keeley Dark Side. <laughs> I use that all the time, but the Keely Dark Side is only mono. So the fact that this can do that trick, but it's more tweakable, and you can even pan the different delays how you want, I thought that would be great. If you do something extreme with the pan spacing of the multiple tape heads, and then you turn up the spring reverb, the spring reverb sums them to mono. So uh, the, the wet side of your signal loses some of its like stereo detail, which is... Small bummer for me. So I don't use this all the time for that because then in order to get reverb and preserve the stereo shit that I want, I'd have to run this into a true dual mono stereo reverb. I mean, it's not impossible. Like, I do do that sometimes. But sometimes, to be honest, I'll just take the Keeley Dark Side, which is mono, and then run it into the Deco and make a stereo with this. So, th so the Volante is cool, but this is the only one where I feel like the Strymon sum to mono thing in the spring reverb um, is like a nuisance. So this is, but I still have it. I didn't sell it. I use it. It's, it's cool. So it's middle tier, but I'm going to put it at the end of middle tier. All right, next we have the El Capistan. Um, the, I sold the El Capistan just because I have the Deco and I have the Volante and I have the timeline. So like, I, I just feel like I can do what the El Capistan does. So I sold it. Um, all right, next we have the Riverside. I played this once in a guitar store when it came out, um, and I decided not to buy it. It sounded cool. It sounded good. It sounded good. But it's like, you know, it's like hundreds of dollars, you know? And, like, I had overdrives and distortions that I liked, so I didn't buy it. So I'm putting this in the low tier. Like, it, it's good. It's cool. It's good. I just... I literally decided not to buy it. So I feel like I have to put it in the low tier. What can I tell you? All right, next we've got the Compadre. This one I've never played. I've just never played this one. I'm sure it rules. I've just never played it. So I have to put it in the annoying tier. I have to put it in the part of this. I have to put it in the tier where it's like, this is the boring parts of this video tier. Okay, then we got the Flint. This is the first Ryman pedal I ever bought. And it's been on my pedal board ever since then. This has been on my pedal board longer than any other pedal. So I'm putting it high tier. Um, the reverbs alone are just like what I want. Like there's nothing weird about this pedal. It's not, there's no way to abuse it. It's like not a cyber pedal at all. But those reverbs, the plate especially, it's just like, it's never not sounded good. Um, so it's just been my go-to reverb on my pedal board since forever um so i'm putting it high tier but you know the fact that it's just not that weird means i'm putting it um behind the ones that can get weird i'm gonna put it behind the timeline and the mobius um where am i gonna put it i'm where, where the fuck i'm gonna put it um I, I guess I'll put it third. I mean, I'm going to put it third. I've just, I've used it so long. I feel like I can't, it, it's, it's like, it's gotta be, it's gotta be up there. All right. Next we've got the big sky MX, the new version. I sold this one. This is going low tier. Um, 
I think if I'd gotten it before I had all my other Strymon reverbs, I, I maybe wouldn't have sold it. Like if I got the Big Sky before I got the Night Sky, then I would have. I already would have had presets on the Big Sky, and I would have had more of a relationship with the Big Sky, um, and I would have kept the Big Sky and sold the Night Sky. But that's not how it went. I, by the time I got the Big Sky with the new version, I'd like already kind of figured out how to get reverb sounds I liked, and I just felt like I didn't need it. And, you know, I, I could, like, sell it on Reverb for, like, I don't remember, 700 bucks or something. You know, sometimes it's hard to say no to $700. Uh, so I sold this one. But obviously, it's a really good pedal. I'm going to put it um, at the top of this tier, but behind the brake. Because I still sometimes miss the brake and more than I even miss the Big Sky. As good as the Big Sky is, I just sort of feel like to get its full power, I'd have to, like, do all the menu diving. And I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to do it, but... Um, you know, I, there is no menus on the night sky. That's part of why I sold the big sky. So that's where that one goes. Uh, okay, next, ultraviolet. I sold this one. Look, this, what do you want me to say? Like, this pedal sounds good, but it's just a univibe. You know what I mean? There's like a univibe in the Mobius. I, I think the Mobius is like the ultimate Strymon sleeper pedal. You know, I'm still mad that the, those, the video I made about the Mobius in the early days of my channel for a long time was one of my favorite YouTube videos I've ever made. I still feel like the guitar playing in that was like some of the, my best playing for a while. Um, so I just, I just feel like the, the Mobius still rules my life. And like, you know, I, I never asked for the ultraviolet. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I took it when they sent it to me, like I made a video about it, but like when I was done with the video, I was like, I, I just, I don't need this univibe. It sounds great. You know what I mean? But um, I, I'll just use the Univibe in my Mobius. Why not? Okay, so I sold that one. Next is the Blue Sky. I sold that one too. Um, I mean, I'm a guy who sold the Big Sky MX. You know what I mean? So, like, after you've done that, like, nothing can hurt you. Like, you're just fearless from that point on in your life. Like, they send you the Big Sky MX for free. You take it, and then you sell it, like, just like danger gleams in your eyes from then on in the rest of your life. So obviously I sold the blue sky too. Like I don't need it. I got the flint and I kept the cloudburst. Don't forget, I kept this. I have this. You know what I mean? So I just sort of felt like the blue sky is cute, but I already have this and the flint and the night sky. I didn't need it. I sold it. Um, next we have the dig. I sold the dig. I sold the dig. That goes on the that goes on low tier. Why did I sell this one? I, I mean, I think it's because like, I already had the timeline and I already had the Volante and the dig is cool, but the Volante, I guess, is like even more tweakable. Uh, so I just sold the dig. And I also kind of felt like, um, I, you know, I don't, I don't really care about the fact that the Volante is supposed to sound like tape and the dig is supposed to sound like digital. I mean, I, I know that that's like a huge deal, right? I can, and I can hear the difference. Like, I hear the difference. But that's not really what I care about. Like, what I care about is how tweakable they are and, like, how much you can bend them to your will, you know? And I felt like the Volante is more tweakable than the dig. So I sold the dig. So I sold it. Uh, but the dig is cool. The dig is good, you know. I, where do I put it in the tier? I don't know. I sold it. I've never really looked back. I'll put it after the brig, after the big sky, maybe, but before everything else. Maybe, maybe that's where I put it. That seems right. Okay. Then uh, we have the Ola. I've never played this one. Um, I've never played this one. But the, it, I know that one of the things it can do is like a dynamic mode where how hard you hit the strings will like. Um, change the degree of modulation. And that sounds cool. I would be into that if I ever played this. So I'm going to put this towards the top of the low tier. All right, that's everything. The only thing left now is the one pedal that I put in ultra tier. Ultra tier is the Iridium. This thing rules my life. I use this all the time. To when, anytime I'm playing guitar in one of my YouTube videos, this is my amp. The fact that I don't have to set microphones, that I can just record directly out of this amp modeler, it makes my life so much easier. And then I record with this too. I mean, when I make records, sometimes I'm in a recording studio and like I get why using real amps is cool. But a lot of times I'm just doing stuff in my apartment and emailing it to people. 
and I use the rhythm right and left. I, I use the iridium on a song that got placed in an Apple commercial. Like I, I use this all the time for no matter what the production level is. Like if it needs the highest standards, I still use the iridium. And no one has ever said like, would you mind redoing that with the real amp? Like whether people realize it or not, like they just buy, it. they they accept, they accept how real this sounds. Um, so I love it. The fact that I don't have to set microphones. The fact that I can like record at high volume, but it's just coming out of a pedal. I love that. I think it sounds good. I, I think it sounds better than good. It sounds great. I, I never wish that I had like a better amp modeler than this. It just does everything I need. Um, I record a lot of stuff. I make a lot of YouTube videos. I, I use this like every single day. So this is ultra tier. It, it's like, it's not even that I like it more than the other Strymon pedals. It's just that like, I literally can't do my life like if this breaks you know what i mean so that's ultra tier all right that's me ranking all the pedals you know it's kind of harder than i thought it would be i hope you enjoyed this video